courses, and then it's very flexible in your major. You can take courses that might meet already your degree requirements, depending on your major. Um, and so it's, it's pretty seamless. If you're here in the summer, you can knock out the certificate basically in the summer by taking those two classes. Uh, we offer them in the first two modules. And so you get, get a diploma, like certificate at graduation actually, and it's on your transcript. Um, so, okay, so what do we do in those courses? Uh, all these topics are covered. You, you focus on the communication skills. You focus on doing that market analysis. You focus on com becoming liter at least some, get, gain some financial literacy, learn about leadership, team building, and things like that. Okay, we also have a bunch of kind of capstone classes. One is focused on having an entrepreneurial career. One is focused on um, creating a business plan for a new venture. And one is focused on consulting because if we created that course because if you look at statistics, a lot of you will be self-employed or contractors and you may not have full-time employment. So we thought, why don't we create a course where you learn the profession of consulting, where you learn how to sell yourself, scope, you know, find clients, scope out deliverables, figure out pricing, things like that. And these students do it while working on a, um, while, while working, this is the experts night we have for the venture planning course, but you, you work with a client company in the community. And we limit that to 16 students because you can only really have four teams and four clients and get a good deliverable for the clients. But that's been a, a great course for students who want uh, real project-based work with real clients. Okay, if you ever go to grad school, I teach a technology commercialization course too, which is um, about that valley of death that I was talking about, right? We're trying to get those scientists and engineers uh, further to the right, so they're creating stuff where we don't have this giant valley of death. Um, so we teach that this semester on Thursday night. Um, and then, like I said, we have a huge startup ecosystem here at Purdue, uh, mainly focused on getting the technology that is Purdue technology owned by Purdue out into the marketplace but also helping students, if they have ventures, connect to, to resources that they might need. So a lot of these, the foundry is in the Burt Morgan Center. It's across the hall from where we are. Um, the Anvil, I, I don't know what the status is too much now, but it's the church. Has anybody been there? They have some events and co-working um, space. Uh, and then uh, Foundry X is a more a community-based thing. All right, intellectual property, if you ever think you've invented something that is patentable, you can go to the Office of Technology Commercialization um, at Purdue and talk to them about what your opportunities are. Um, and, um, so I'd just like to show this slide because I think people mix up the educational piece of entrepreneurship and the like, commercialization and go and do it part of entrepreneurship. So our goal in education programs, like I said, it's not necessarily that you need to want to do this um, you know, when you're 22. It doesn't matter if it's in 20 years, um, but uh, um, it, it's creating entrepreneurs in the short or long term. Those other resources are really interested in starting something today, you know, or you're ready to do something right away. All right, so we are in the Burton Morgan Center for Entrepreneurship, so that's at the corner of State and Martin Jiski Drive on the second floor, and that's it. Any questions? <coughs> Is any of this pertinent to what you're doing in Epics right now? Are you talking to the clients? Yeah? Yes? Yes. Oh yes. Okay. So you asked, how do you find a good team? If there's a lot of emphasis on having a good team, well, that's what I said. It's complicated, right? I mean, it's how do you find good friends, right? It's not a simple process. Um, I, you know, I think really defining what it is that you need, you know, what the role you want that person to play, and it's a it's a lot of vetting of the person. Um, it's doing as much research and not taking you know, what they say, showing some evidence of what they're able to do. Um, the venture capitalists that I was talking about, they do significant background searches on any CEO or any company, they, on, on all the top people in those companies before they invest. 
to find out because it's very easy when you're hiring somebody and somebody interviews, and this has happened to me, you know, they, some people are excellent at selling themselves and, um, and even providing like some kind of basic evidence, but until you have them in your office, you know, working for six months to really see what the productivity is, uh, it's very, very hard, it's very hard to know. So I think always, you know, checking references, like I said, not necessarily just taking your friend, I mean, I guess if they're decent and they're willing to work for a very low rate, wage, right, you always, that's a trade-off. Um, but yeah, just vetting, 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 and that's whatever you do. Um, because you can, get, you can get fooled sometimes, so it's hire, very hard to hire good people. And it's not even good people, but that they fit your culture and what you want to do. Um, because I've had this situation, um, I like working with people I like, you know, employees I work with or I hire that if that we can have a little flexibility. I do not have to watch what they do all the time, but they're they're self motivated and intrinsically motivated that, you know, if they have to take care of something for half a day, that they'll make up the work or they'll do it at night, and I don't I don't ever have to worry about the job being done. Now I've had other employees where they think that okay, if I come in at eight, if I just sit in my seat all day and do nothing and leave at five that I've done my job. Um, but there hasn't been anything. So it becomes, um, so I rather have people in the office less, but doing the work that I don't have to worry about than having them kind of clock in from nine to five. So having people fit that culture and, and that they feel like they fit that culture and they can understand and being very kind of open about that. So. Other questions? Yes. Right. For returns, um, that's obviously like a very long time when mm -hmm. you think about a certain product or like what you're doing with your life. Obviously. Oh yeah, for young for students, your life is totally ways, different in seven years. Yeah. yeah. Like, what are some ways you can kind of check that you're still like maintaining and like an upwards trajectory, so to say? What do you mean in your personal career? Um, just like. Well, I mean, it, it, to some degree it happens, you know, kind of by osmosis, right? I mean, if, if people are interested in it, and you're getting traction, and you're enthusiastic, and, and you're getting good feedback, and you're doing the market research, and people want what you're doing, or, or people are investing, you know, if you have some momentum, it kind of, you know, that's what's going to drive you. Now, if you're in your room by yourself just trying to think of something for seven years, yeah, you need something. But it typically doesn't, it typically doesn't happen that way. Um, you know, um, but I think some people probably hang on to things longer than they should, right? I mean, because you fall in love with your own stuff. I mean, it's like a relationship, right? Who has stayed in a relationship longer than they did? But now that they're out of it, they think, oh my God, I stayed in that so long and the writing was on the wall. Come on, somebody. No? Okay, yeah. I mean, so it's a, it's a bit, you know, we have blinders on for our own stuff. We think our ideas are great and and it hurts like to think that oh no i'm gonna have to scrap my idea and so i think people are don't listen sometimes because to outside feedback as much as they should and aren't realistic because and it seems cool and it's fun to have a startup right so the day you say my startup sucks then you don't have it anymore right because you bailed so then you have to come up with something else so i, I do think some people hang on uh, a bit too long sometimes Anything else? No. All right. Well, feel free to contact me at any time. Just Google Natalie Entrepreneurship Purdue. You should find my email, Nat Duval at Purdue. And um, yeah. And if you're interested in the program, Rita Baker is our coordinating academic advisor. And she is great with fitting in this program in your schedule and figuring out what co other courses in your majors you can take uh, to complete the credentials. So, all right. Good luck. See ya.